Okay, grade nine, this is your chapter six uh, practice test on linear relations. Uh, there are 15 questions, I think, uh, on this. Four of them are true, false, and the rest are all um, short answer. So the first question is true or false. This is the coefficient in the linear equation can be determined by the dividing the difference of x, the difference of x, by the difference of y. Now, the answer for this, of course, is false. And what you should do to make it right is say it's the difference of y divided by the difference of x, right? So in your y column, if we have an x and y, it's this difference here divided by this difference here that will tell you your coefficient of your equation. Question two, the coefficient of the equation of this table is two. So again, when you're given a table, you're going to put x equals y, leaving space for a coefficient and a constant. So the first thing you do when you're given a table of values is you put x equals y and you leave space for a coefficient and a constant. And the first thing you look for is the difference in the y column, just like in the last question, which is 2, divided by the difference in the x column, which is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So the coefficient of x is 1, not 2, and therefore it's false. Now, normally if you have a coefficient of 1, you would never write it. You would just keep it as x. In question three, it says the equation. So again, we're given a table. We're going to put x equals y. We're going to leave space for the coefficient and constant. The difference here is 1. The difference here is 2. 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5. So automatically, I know that that's not going to be right because that equation and the one I have so far is not right. But we're going to keep it going. So now, next thing to do is find the constant is to substitute any ordered pair. I'm going to take the first one. Half of 8 is 4, 4 plus 8, plus 8, plus 8. So the answer is this is the equation, not that. So you get no mark if you circled false, if you got it right, but didn't have this information. So, of course, you would need to prove that it's false because you would need to show what the true equation was for the table of values. And finally, your last true and false was when plotted on a Cartesian plane, the points of the 5x minus 1... 0.5 equals y. We'll cross the y-axis at negative 1.5. So if I do my xy axis, now I'm going to do 0, 1, 2, and 3. When x is 0, if I think about a Cartesian plane, and this is my x-axis, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. If x is 0, then y, if I substitute it in here, x is 0, This will become 0, and my y value will really just be the constant of my equation, because if x is 0, the constant really becomes the value of y, because it turns the part of your expression that has the variable and the coefficient into 0. So therefore, when x is 0, y would be 1.5. Now, if I plot the next ones, x is 1, we'd have 5 times 1 minus 1.5 is 3.5, so x is 1. 3.5 and so on the other would be up here so if i draw that line the question is where does it cross the y-axis the answer is it crosses it at negative 1.5 so the answer is true and when you're asked this question anytime you have an equation the constant of your equation will always be where the line crosses the y-axis and that's important to remember in the next question question five is what is the equation for this line so simply make a table of values Put in the three ordered pairs that you know. Actually, you only need one, but one and th or two pairs. One and three. Uh, I'm going to use two and five. You could go with 1.5 and four if you wanted to. Uh, actually, let's do that. Let's go 1.5 and four. Let's not. 1.5 and four, and then two and five. The difference here is one. The difference here is 0.5. And one divided by 0 0.5. Now, a lot of people thought this was one. If you don't know these things, take a calculator. And 1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2. Another way to think about it, you have a dollar divided into piles of 50 cents. How many piles could you make? You could make 2. So therefore, your coefficient is 2. Substitute this in 2 times 1, which is your x value, equals 3, which is your y value. 3 is your y, x is 1. 2 does not equal 3, but if you add 1 to it, you have that, and then you could just write that right on the line. 
your equation for that particular question is 2 times the x value will equal y. 2 times x plus 1, excuse me. Okay. Same thing for the next one. What's the equation? So here I just need two points. I'll find three, though, because usually we always do. Uh, here is negative 5 and negative 12. Here is negative 4 and negative 4. And here is negative 3 and 4. <clears throat> so those are three points. I don't need the fourth one. I just need two or three points. Now this one's interesting because it actually goes up by 8, not down by 8. And this actually goes up by 1, not down by 1, even though they're negatives. So 8 divided by 1 is 8, and that is the coefficient of my equation. Substitute any ordered pair. 8 times negative 5 equals negative 12. Well, negative 40 does not equal negative 12. But if I added 28 to it, 40 plus, negative, plus 28 is negative 12. So the equation for this line is 8x plus 28 equals y. And your third question, uh, this time there are no points, but what you can do is you can simply add those two points, or three points, or four points, because you know these two intersect there. Make your table from it, x and y. x is 0, y is 1.25. If x is 0.5, y is 1.5. And if x is 1, y is 1.75. So here it goes up by a quarter. Here it goes up by 50 cents. So 0 0.25 divided by 0 0.5. You have a quarter divided into piles of 50 cents. You can only make half a pile, so I know it's going to be 0 0.5. But if you weren't sure, you can grab your calculator. 0.25 divided by 0.5 is 0.5. So that is the coefficient of your equation. 0.5x. Now here we have that 0 again. So 0 0.5 times 0 equals 1.25. So 0 plus what equals 1.25? Of course, it's plus 1.25. And therefore, my equation is 0.5x plus 1.25 equals y. All right, moving along to uh, graphing. Here you're given an equation of negative x plus 1 equals y. So from an equation, you'll have to make your table of values. Now you can assign any values you want. I usually recommend 1, 2, 3. And in the equation, once you have it written, substitute 1 for your x. So negative 1 plus 1 will equal your y, or 0 will equal y. So when x is 1, that will become 0. When x is 2, a negative 2 plus 1 would be x equals, or sorry, negative 1 equals y. And when x equals 3, this would be negative 2. So therefore, I have 1, 0, which is right here. I have 2, negative 1, which is right here, and I have 3, negative 2, which is right there. Take a ruler or something and connect the dots, and you have your line. That, well, that's a pretty good line, actually. You have uh, the line that matches uh, those three points. Graph the equation for this one. So a lot of people struggled with this one, but anyway. Do not restructure your equation. So I have 4 minus 2x. That is not the same thing as 2x minus 4. Substitute 1 here. 4 minus 2 times 1 is 2. 2 will equal your y. When you substitute 2 there, 4 take away 4 is 0. When you substitute 3 there, 4 take away 6 is negative 2. Plot those three points. 1, 2, 2, 0, 3, negative 2. Connect all the dots. That's not as good as the other one, but you have your line for that equation. Your next equation, uh, 2.5x minus 2 equals y. So assign x and y. Give yourself values of 1, 2, and 3. 2.5 times 1 minus 2 will be 2.5 times, 2.5 minus 2, which is 0 0.5. When x is 2, you get 5 minus 2, which is 3. And when x is 3, 
you get 7.5 minus 2, which is 5.5. Plot these three points, 1 and 0 0.5 goes in between there. 2 and 3 goes right there. And 3 and 5.5 goes right there. Connect the dots, and you have your line. Moving along to the next type of question, this time we're given a table of values, and it asks you to find A and B. For these, you simply need to find your equation, and then you can find the values of each. So here we got the difference is going up by a half. Here the up difference is going up by, excuse me, 2. So 0 0.5, which is the difference of your Y, divided by 2. If you have 50 cents divided into piles of $2, you can make a quarter of a pile. But if you don't know that, put 0.5 divided by 2. And it tells you it's a quarter, which is going to be the coefficient of your equation. Substitute your first pair. 0 0.25 times 1 equals 10.5. Here you need a constant of plus 10.25, and therefore your equation is this. That's just finding your equation. Once you have it, then you're going to need to find the x val or the y value for that one, and the x value for that one. So in both cases on your test, you need to take your equation. For the first one, you know your x, so you're going to substitute it in. to find your y. So once you've done that, by substituting the 100 value for x, you found that the a value, therefore, a equals 35.25. Do the same procedure for your second value. I'll just bring this over here. Write your equation a second time. This time you're going to substitute the y value as 65.5. And now it's a little bit different than the last one. You're not simplifying. You're going to solve it using isolation of variables. A quarter of x, you're going to subtract 10.25 from both sides. And you're going to get uh, 55.25. Divide by a quarter. Use your calculator. 55.25 divided by a quarter should be 221. So x will equal 221. So therefore, the value of the x value, or b, b would be 221. OK, your next question says, what are the values of a and b again? So again, we are given a table of values. And forgive me for not having it very well, but the difference here is 1, or adding 1. We can put a positive 1 there to help you remember it's not going down, but going up. Here we have it going up by 0 0.25 each time. Now remember, the difference in y, which is 1, divided by the difference of x, is going to be the coefficient. Now, a lot of people are going to make a mistake here and think this is 0 0.25. But if you have a dollar, and you're dividing it into piles of 25 cents, you can make 4 piles. So 1 divided by 0 0.25 is 4. If you take your calculator and go 1 divided by 0.25, it'll also tell you 4. So you have to use a calculator if you're not really, really, really sure what 1 divided by 0.25 is. So once you have that, that's going to be the coefficient of your equation. So put 4 in, and just follow the same procedure. Substitute the first ordered pair into it. This is going to be 1, because 4 times a quarter is 1. That, oh, sorry, that makes it easy, because your constant is going to be plus 2. So the equation for this is 4x plus 2 equals y. Now once you have that, you're going to substitute twice, right? Once for the a value and once for the b value. So I'll do a first. So here, I know my x value is 15.5. So I'm going to put that as my x value. And once I solve this side, I'm going to have the y value. So this is going to be 62, because 4 times 15.5 is 62 plus 2. So 64 will equal the a value. So 64 is going to be, so a 
will equal 64. So therefore, A is 64, and B will be something else. Let's go check what B is going to be. So I'll erase this again. And in my second ordered pair, this time I know my Y, but not my X. So I'm going to put my Y in as being 100. And this time I have to go 4X divided by 98. Not sure what that is, so I take my thing. And go 98 divided by the coefficient of 4 will equal 24.5. So therefore, x is going to be 24.5, or the b value. So b will be 24.5. And the last one in this type of question, again, it's find the equation. So here it's going up by 10 cents. And here it's going up by 1. 0.1 divided by 1 is, of course, itself. So the coefficient in my equation will be the difference of that, so 0 0.1. So that's my coefficient part done. So now I have to find my constant. Substitute any ordered pair. I'll do the first one. And in this one, x is 1. y is 10.10 or 10.1. So 0 0.1 does not equal 10.1, but if I add 10 to it, it does. So therefore, this is my equation. I'll get rid of all this. So I'm going to clone it twice and just have it there twice. There's my equation twice. The first time, again, if I circle that, I know the x value is 27. I don't know the y value. I called it a, so we're going to find out what the a value has to be. So 0 0.1 multiplied by the x value of 27 plus 10 will tell you the y value, or in this case, the a value. When I multiply 27 by 0.1, I just move my decimal place over 1 to get 2.7. And therefore, I'd have 12.7 equals y. So this value, this a value, or the y value, is 12.7. So therefore, your a value will be 12.7. And your second value, I know my y value to be 21.70 or 21.7. I don't know my x value, so I'm going to keep it as x. I'm simply going to isolate the value, or isolate the variable to figure out what it is. Now this time when you divide by a tenth, if you have $11.70 divided into piles of a dime, you can make 117 piles. Now if you don't believe me, just take the calculator. 11.7 divided by 0.1 is 117. So therefore, your missing x value is 117 or b equals 117. Okay, your last two questions. It's not question five, it's question actually 14, I think. Well, that was loud. Uh, so what's the 100th number in your pattern? So this time and on the test, what you have to do is make a table of values. And you're going to call it, instead of x and y, you're going to call it n and v. Now the n stands for the number in the sequence, and the v stands for its value. So in this case, we're going to say the first number has a value of negative 1.5. That's a negative. The second number has a value of negative 2. And the third number has a value of negative 2.5. Okay, so we just need 3. We'll get the fourth one there if you want. The fourth value is negative 3, but we really don't need it. Because all we need to do now is find the equation and then use that information to finish our pattern. So here, we're going up by, sorry, down by 50 cents each time. And here, we're going up by 1. So therefore, the coefficient is negative 0 0.5. Now remember, you could also write it like x divided by negative 2. These two things are the same thing, negative half of x or negative half of x. You can do it both ways. But for simplicity's sake, we like to keep a decimal coefficient. Okay. Substitute your first value of x, which is 1 and negative 1.5. So here I'm going to make this... Here I'm going to make this 1, and this negative 1.5. This is going to be negative 0 0.5 and negative 1.5. So therefore, I have to subtract 1 from it. I have that as my equation. Negative half of x minus 1 equals y. So then I'm going to substitute the hundredth number. So that really means the hundredth number in the pattern, the n or the hundredth number. So I'm going to put it in here as such. And I'm going to get negative 50 minus 1, which is negative 51 equals y. So therefore, the hundredth value 
will be negative 51. And your last question, a pizza costs 750 plus 25 cents per topping. What is an equation that represents the cost of a pizza with T toppings? So C is going to be the cost, and T is going to be the toppings. So if I think about 25 cents per topping, it's going to be a coefficient of 25 cents. Because if I multiply the number of toppings I buy by 20, 0.25, that's going to tell me the cost of the topping part of my bill. Plus the cost of 750 for the pizza itself, that will equal the cost of my pizza. So the equation that you needed to put was 0.5t plus 7.5 equals c.